Stagnation with phlegm damp. I think someone mentioned that it was hard to treat this. It can be. It can be because it is hard to get rid of uh, phlegm damp. So in the chat, how do you get rid of phlegm damp? Besides dissolve, what's the key to get to resolving phlegm damp? Besides resolving phlegm damp, <laughs> there's one key. Not eating dairy helps. Yes, I'm talking about herb wise. Herb wise, strengthen the spleen. You could. Romantic herbs. Aromatic. Okay, I was gonna say ar romantic herbs. Never heard of those before. Yes, Lucas, you move blood. Dampness is sluggishness. Things aren't pushing, right? It's kind of like a pipe. You got a pipe. If water, let's say you have a water pipe. If water does not flow fast through that pipe, it, let's say it just like flows very slowly, that's when you start accumulating crud on, in, inside the pipe. But then when you push the water fast through that pipe, guess what happens? It picks up all that crud in the pipe and pushes it through, right? Does that analogy make sense? That's how you get rid of phlegm damp. You push the water, push the blood, push the chi, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it through, okay? That's how you do it. Now, you do have to be careful if they are deficient. Because if, if they're deficient and you keep on pushing it really fast, you can make them more deficient, right? So the treatment strategy is invigorate blood, regulate chi, transform phlegm and dam. So notice how my first strategy was invigorate blood and regulate chi and not transform phlegm dam, right? Did you see that? So these are in order, okay? So you want to push, that's what I'm saying, it's just that analogy, push the water through. That will pick up a lot of the gunk, okay? So push it through, right? Now, with people that are deficient, yeah, you got to be careful. But even people of deficient, I still push it through. I would still push it. And then maybe, and then actually add, you can add a little tonifying, but this specific diagnosis is stagnation with phlegm damp. So there is no deficiency or very little deficiency. Okay. So what, actually, let me switch back because this doesn't show you an organ, right? So how are you going to choose the points if it's phlegm damp, if there ain't no organs? Let me see. How are you going to put which acupuncture points are you going to do? This is stagnation. Stag with when damp. First thing, first treatment, the spleen nine, lung nine, yeah, those all can all work. First is invigorate, invig, blood, and chi. So you have acu, you have herbs. Yeah, so a lot of you are focusing on spleen. Yeah, you can focus on spleen. What is the main organ, two main organs that help you push blood? See, think about this physiologically, physical. Liver is one. Clarissa, yep. Heart. Okay. Actually, yeah, I wouldn't do, I would not necessarily focus on spleen first. See, <clears throat> I do things differently, right? I would focus on the liver and the heart. Liver moves chi, heart moves blood, right? So if we can get those two organs functioning correctly, it will push things through. 
okay, push and pick up all that gunk that's stuck in, all right? So liver acupuncture points are the same ones that we went over up here. Heart points, the heart is more towards the center of the chest. So for the heart, I would do points like large intestine 11 to large intestine 14, lung 5 to lung uh, 3. That would move blood to the heart and get the heart to pump better. Okay. When that happens, that naturally invigorates blood and invigorates chi. So which formulas would we use for herbs? And we have to remember, this is for GERD, okay? So it is happening within the stomach, too. You can use language. Are you talking about language? There's another formula, I think, for that. Yes, large intestine 11 to 14 to move blood to the heart. Correct. I think that's, Christine, what you were saying. Gui Pi Tang. We're talking about moving blood. Gui Pi Tang doesn't move blood. Sheng Mai Yin, those are tonifying. Shao Zhu Yu Tang. Shao Fu Zhu Yu Tang moves blood in the lower part of the body, lower abdomen. The stomach is more in the middle part of the abdomen. Huo Dong. Huo Tong. Yeah, Holly, Shif, oh, uh, Christine and Holly got it. Shif Wu Zhu Tang, Lucas got it too. So Shif Wu Zhu Tang is a great one. Shif Wu Zhu Yu Tang. And also the one through the stomach. Ge Sha Zhu Yu Tang. Okay. And then transform phlegm, number two. Transform phlegm damp. Acupuncture, you can target the same, uh, you can target what we talked about. A lot of y'all talked about spleen, right? Uh, for dampness, and you can do that. Spleen and even lungs. I would target the lung function and the spleen function. Right? So spleen function, you can do spleen 6 to spleen 9 bilateral. Lung function, you can use lung 5 to lung 3. Right? How do you determine when you are doing invigorating and switching to transforming from? You're doing both at the same time. All of these strategies, it's not like you're doing it one step at a time. It's you're focusing more on invigorating blood, regulating chi first. And here's the thing, how I determine which I do. Sometimes it may be, it may be actually all the time I do it, invigorate blood first. But it's based off the pulse. I do it based off the pulse until I can... A damp pulse is below its home. A damp pulse is below its home. So if the pulse is supposed to be right here, but it's down here, then I'm going to do something to raise the pulse back to its home. All right? So what's the best way to raise a pulse? This is this down here is a damp pulse, phlegm damp pulse. What can you do to raise the pulse? So one thing that comes into mind because I'm just I'm currently treating someone is with erectile dysfunction. So how do you how 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 do men get erections? What has to happen down there that will cause it to raise up? Okay, to rise up. Circulation, exactly. So to raise the pulse, you just increase circulation. Oops. You just increase circulation. That's how you raise a pulse. So that's how I determine what I do first. 
Yes, you can do uh, astringents, um, but I like to move the blood first. Moving the blood, <clears throat> when people have a lot have chronic health issues, there's always a circulation problem. So whenever you're in doubt, just start moving the blood. Not vigorously, but just put some blood invigorating herbs um, into your formula, and, and it will start helping. Okay? So the herbs for transforming phlegm, what would y'all use? So we got to transform phlegm, right? What herbs do you transform phlegm? Can transform phlegm? Yeah, I saw ban sha. Yeah, ban sha ho tang. Yeah, exactly. See, with ban sha ho tang, you can use this. This is another strategy. You can use the same formula for different diagnosis, differentiation. Like we had stomach fire. We can use ban sha ho po tang there. We have stagnation with phlegm damp. You can use ban sha ho po here, ban sha ho po tang here. So in your, this is like a management thing, but you only need to carry ban sha ho po tang you don't need to carry a formula for every single diagnosis. See, it's not the formula. Can you see why I say very in the beginning of this webinar, it has nothing to do with the herbs, it has nothing to do with the formulas, it's about your strategy. The same formula can hit complete different strategies. So now you just, you can use Ban Sha Ho Tang in many of the situations, right? You won't have to carry five different type of formulas you can carry just one transform phlegm you can use there's so many different types wing sun one way to get rid of phlegm damp is to pee it out someone said zhu ling tang zhu ling san that's another one you pee it out you can use that also with the liver fire, right? So you could carry Zhu Ling San. Okay, let's move on. Stop sharing here and share here. And let's move on. You see, y'all picked the same formulas I picked. That's why I said all of y'all, all of y'all already have the knowledge. You already have, what I mean by knowledge, you already know the points. You already know the herbs and formulas. So you just have to know how to utilize them with the right strategy. You don't need to know, you don't need to learn new acupuncture points. You don't need to learn new herbs. You just need to utilize what you have with the right strategy. Okay? Because here's what I do. I do xue fu zhu yu tang. Ban Sha Ho Po Tang, this is on your slide. Go Sha Zhu Yi Tang and Chai Hu Shu Guan San. Xue Fu Zhu Yi Tang and Chai Hu Shu Guan San move Qi and blood. Go Sha Zhu Yi Tang also moves blood. You can see it. My predominant thing is moving blood. When it comes to stagnation with phlegm damp, I love moving blood. Okay? I barely have, I mean, Ban Sha Ho Po Tang is probably the only one that really addresses more of the phlegm damp. So that's what I'm saying. If you move blood, the phlegm damp sometimes just magically just goes away. The, the pulse just rises to the occasion, okay? <laughs> 